Hey, Brooklyn, I'm bored. Well, you could always do your homework. Or not. Hmm. Want to make something? Like what? Why don't we bake something? Oh, you know I'm always hungry. Welcome, Welcome honorable, honorable judges, judges, chairpersons, ladies, gentlemen, gentlemen and fellow 4-H members. members. My name is Emma Davidson. And my name is Brooklyn Nielsen. Welcome to our demo where we will be making delicious gluten-free brownies. We chose this topic for a demonstration because I have celiac disease. This means that Emma's immune system has a negative reaction to gluten, a protein found in wheat, barley, and rye. Over time, this reaction damages her small intestine's lining and prevents the absorption of some nutrients. To start our demo, we will need One third cup cocoa, half a cup of hot water, a quarter cup unsweetened chocolate, four tablespoons butter, half a cup of oil, two large eggs, as well as two egg yolks, two teaspoons of vanilla, two and a half cups of sugar, one and three quarters cups of gluten free flour, half a teaspoon of xanthan gum three quarters of a tablespoon of salt, and three quarters a cup of chocolate pieces. Now, on these here lists, you may see some ingredients that you might not normally put in the brownies that you'd make at your home. This is because gluten is what makes the normal brownies rise and helps bind all the ingredients together. Without the gluten, you need to add different ingredients to help your mixture successfully bake as well as taste delicious. Now, these are the supplies you'll need to make your brownies. We'll need a small bowl, a whisk, a microwave safe bowl, a wooden spoon, a lined baking pan, toothpicks, and a knife. Now, let's, let's get, get baking. baking. Due to time restraints, we have pre-measured our ingredients. First off, be sure that you have an oven that's preheated to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Then, whisk together your cocoa with your hot water in a bowl until that becomes smooth. Once Emma has that all whisked together, we're going to add in our unsweetened chocolate as well and whisk that in. Hey Emma, is celiac disease hereditary or genetic? It's hereditary, meaning that it runs in families. People with a first degree rel relative with celiac disease have a 1 in 10 risk of developing it. Once that's all mixed together, the next step is to whisk in the melted butter as well as the oil. <laughs> you may notice at this point your mixture may become to look a little curdled, but that's perfectly normal at this point. After that's all combined and smooth, you want to add your two full eggs as well as your two egg yolks. After that's mixed well, we're going to add in our vanilla extract and our sugar. Then we're going to whisk that until it's completely incorporated and set that bowl aside. Did you know that celiac disease can lead to an increased risk of intestinal lymphoma if not treated? Once that's bowl set aside, we're going to take our other bowl and we're going to add together our gluten-free flour with our xanthan gum, as well as our salt. Hey Emma, I love buffets. What about you? Actually, I can't eat at buffets. Even if most of the supplies provided at the buffet are actually gluten-free, there is such a high chance of cross-contamination. Cross-contamination was like gluten-free food touches non-gluten-free food, and therefore the gluten-free food is no longer safe for me to eat. Now, we have two separate mixtures. We'll gradually add the dry mixture into the wet ingredients and mix that until it becomes smooth. It's best to use a rubber spatula to do this. Hey Brooklyn, did you know this disease is actually an autoimmune condition with no cure? There are just ways to minimize the symptoms and help rebuild the immune system, such as a gluten-free diet. Emma, how old were you when you were diagnosed? I was actually diagnosed very young. I was diagnosed at just five years old, and I had a full scope down when I was 
in Children's Hospital. Nowadays, there's new technology where you can actually be tested for celiac disease with a simple blood test. When your mixture is all mixed together, it should look something like this. The last step is to fold in our semi-sweet chocolate pieces, and then we're going to pop that into the oven for 30 to 35 minutes. Can you pass me that baking pan, Emma? For sure. What advice would you give to people who are diagnosed with celiac disease? Honestly, I would tell them that it's much easier nowadays. When I was first diagnosed, we even couldn't find a simple loaf of bread. So now, there's so many more options that it's actually quite simple to find food, and you can even eat at many restaurants with gluten-free options. Now I'm just gonna pop this into the oven. Hmm. Do you think a nice vanilla spread would make these brownies even more delicious? Oh, that would make my mouth water. To make this vanilla spread, you're gonna need One and a quarter cup butter, one and th three quarter cups of icing sugar, two and a half tablespoons of milk, two teaspoons vanilla, and one eighth teaspoon salt. The supplies you're going to need to make this icing is an electric mixer, a rubber spatula, a knife, as well as a bowl. The first step to making this delicious frosting is to beat together the butter on medium speed until that becomes smooth. Did you know that all individuals with celiacs are born with a genetic predisposition disease? But the age of onset can vary from infancy to old age. Some people are diagnosed at birth or during their childhood, but in many, the disease remains dormant until triggered later in life. After that, it's grad After that, we're going to gradually add in half of our icing sugar and beat until the mix becomes smooth. Hey, Emma, are there any warning signs for celiac disease? Actually, there are plenty. Some of the more common symptoms include growth problems, weight loss, abdominal pain, fatigue, and irritability, which my mom likes to tell people I never grew out of that symptom. When your icing, icing is all mixed together, it should look something like this. Lastly, we're going to frost our cooled brownies. Ding! I think they're done. While Brooklyn frosts the brownies, I'm going to quickly summarize the steps we took to make them. First, we gathered all of our ingredients. Next, we gathered all of our supplies. Then, we mixed all of our ingredients together and baked them in the oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 30 to 35 minutes. Mmm. And for our frosting, we gathered our supplies and ingredients, mixed all the ingredients together, and lastly, we are ready to frost our cooled brownies. Now, gluten-free products tend to cost a bit more than regular ingredients, so it costs roughly about a dollar per brownie. Mmm, gluten-free, chocolatey brownies that everyone can enjoy. Are there any questions? Yes. The question has been asked, if we can't eat, use the traditional wheat flour, what kinds of flour are in our mixture? Well, actually, the one we buy is actually a flour blend, and it includes corn flour and rice flour, as well as a little bit of coffee flour. Does that answer your question? Are there any other questions? Yes. The question has been asked is how come when her friend was diagnosed, she wasn't diagnosed till she was 17, but in cases like mine, I was diagnosed, diagnosed when I was so young. So if you didn't quite catch what Brooklyn was saying in our demonstration, that everyone that has celiac disease is actually born with it, but the disease will actually remain dormant in their body until it's triggered by something in their life. And doctors haven't actually fi figured out what that trigger is, and it can also be different for many people. So I was triggered right when I was four, and that's when I started getting sick. But in cases like your friend or even people who are diagnosed in their 40s or 50s, it can re remain dormant for a long time. Does that answer your question? Yes. 
the question that has been asked is, what is xanthan gum? So xanthan gum acts as a binder, as gluten is usually the proteins that hold everything together. So when you put the xanthan gum in there, it makes the mixture stickier, so therefore everything holds together when it bakes. Has this answered your question? Are there any further questions? Yes. The question has been asked is, can you use baking soda or baking powder in gluten-free brownies? The answer is yes. Actually, it doesn't contain any wheat products or any wheat byproducts, but we just didn't choose that recipe because I found this recipe all uh, tastes the best to me. Does this answer your question? Yes. The question that has been asked is if you want to make non-gluten-free brownies, could you sub out the flour and the xanthan gum? I don't see how that would make much of a difference, so I believe that you could do that. But I can get back to you if you'd like. Uh, this was actually a non-gluten-free recipe that we did adapt. So we, it took some trial and error, but then I'm not exactly sure of the original recipe to revert it back. But we could also get back to you. Thank you. Are there any further questions? Any further questions? Yes. The question has been asked is, can you find these ingredients in the regular grocery store? Actually, yes, we picked up all these ingredients at our local store. Uh, they're all just in the separate baking aisle, and then we found the flour in the gluten-free section. Does this answer your question? Any further questions? The question has been asked is, what are the toothpicks used for? So we just used these uh, when we were actually baking them. We used them to check if they were baked through. So you would put it into the brownies and then pull it out and see if there's any rem remnants left on the toothpick. But since our brownies were already baked, we just wanted to have them up there for demonstration purposes. Does this answer your question? Are there any further questions? Are there any more questions? Are there any more questions? If there are no further questions, this concludes our demonstration on gluten-free, just-beat-it brownies.